So, uh, first of all, uh, I want to just thank every one of you, and I want to just share that uh, all of you are uh, inspiring people. For many other students who would have grown through the, you know, 10th, 12th standard of graduation, uh, compared to many of them, you have achieved a lot more success to get into a, you know, to study, to educate, to get from the management colleges you got into. So, first of all, uh, for your big success which you've thus far, very hearty. Uh, congratulations. So, uh, heartiest congratulations to every one of you for uh, coming this far. So, uh, really, uh, they asked me to speak something uh, about the bank and all that. I have no intention of doing all that. I'm actually more uh, keen to, uh, to, to know you and uh, just know where you come from, what is it that moves you, uh, what motivates you and what brought you here. So anybody can go, guys. Why don't some of you come in the forward, leave your chairs. You can come here, we can just talk for a while. Come, come, thank you, man. Come here. Yeah, okay, some of you also come here. So, uh, yeah, let me start with you. What's your name? Jyoti. So, uh, what do you do, Jyoti, and uh, where are you from? So, currently I'm pursuing MBA from IIM Bangalore. Uh, First of all, congratulations to her for getting to IIM Bangalore. Pretty well, like uh, for me, if I talk about my journey, I come from very humble background. Uh, like we saw the video, um, I think most of us are from that kind of background. And uh, like my one of my friends said, uh, in a place where you are striving hard and uh, looking at the market conditions right now, so you are striving hard to earn like uh, 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 10,000, 20,000 bucks a month, and where you get like two lakhs, it's a really uh, Good. So, so tell me about yourself. What, what's your background? What, where, um, did you, where did you grow up? What did you study? So I am uh, I'm from Jamshedpur. I was born and brought up there. Uh, I did my schooling there. Post that, I did my B.Tech in Electrical Engineering from BIT Sindri. Very good. And uh, post that, I have worked for around 29 months for Aditya Birla Group uh, in Hindalco Division, then Hindalco Division. And then I cracked CAD and finally got into Ambar. Awesome! Congratulations! So what did the family do? Uh, actually, my uh, father works as a supervisor in Tata Motors. Mm. Uh, my mom is housewife. And I have a younger sibling. She is currently pursuing BCom. So... So what was one very difficult thing you, that you faced, which you solved, which you came through? Uh, uh, so during COVID, uh, actually, there was time when my father lost his job. So, not lost his job, but it was kind of moment when uh, he was put back because of the manpower cut down. Uh, so, at, and during that time, uh, luckily, my, uh, I was about to join, but my joining was delayed. So, we kind of had to sail through that difficult financial situation wherein, like, your, for six months, your family income is just straddled. So uh, we sailed through that uh, successfully. I looked for some internship, kind of little bit help my family, and then finally I got on board and yeah. Congratulations. So tell me, uh, Sanju. Sir, so I'm Sanju Kumar. I'm from Bangalore, Karnataka, and uh, currently I'm doing my MBA. So what's your family doing? Uh, so basically, I come from agriculture family. Agriculture family. Yes. So what does your family so produce? We, uh, hmm. we have just half acre of arecale. And uh, apart from that... Uh, ha you have half an acre? Yes. So what do you produce? In we grow arecale. Hmm? Arecale. Super. Uh, okay. And, uh, Super. Okay. And, uh, uh, earlier we used to grow paddy. Now we are completely dependent on arecale. And uh, now since we are completely dependent on Arikana, it takes time to grow. And we are completely agriculture based family and in our home we have two cow. We are uh, completely dependent on the dairy, milk. Uh, so that is what we do. And my father, uh, he takes care of uh, complete agriculture thing. My mom supports him. And uh, coming to my background, I did my BCom with retail marketing, then I worked for two years. Then I resigned my job and got into Symbiosis Nagpur for my MBA. So where did you study? Uh, BCom. So where did you study? What kind of school? What school did you study? Uh, what college? Sir, actually I uh, studied from Jawahar Navodaya Vidyalaya. It's a uh, central government school. I was doing my schooling there. And then uh, I did a project based on marketing. Then I sent it to TVS Motor Company. 
they were quite impressed with my project and they sponsored my BCom education in a top college in Coimbatore. And then I, I got placed there because of COVID, my job got revoked. And then uh, I went, I worked in Gati, Gati Limited, which is... So I was, what, did, what did you work in Gati? I was into B2B sales. So two years I did uh, sales. Then after that, I realized that I need to elevate my life and MBA is that bridge. So uh, I gave my snap and got into Symbiosis Nagpur. Awesome. So with this scholarship, one thing I would like to uh, share here that a lot of people, uh, my father shared this in, uh, message to everyone uh, that I come from a typical rural village where education is considered as a not great priority. So when I go back to my village, I can tell all this, uh, all this my uh, rural people that money comes second when you have a greater vision in your life. And if you want to do something big, just go ahead and everything will fall into place. And this is a great example that IDFC scholarship awesome, man. Great is going job. to inspire Fantastic. all my people. Anybody who wants to come, guys, there's some space here. Mm. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Mm. So, uh, uh, basically, uh, after doing my class 12, uh, which I did from uh, a rural uh, school. You said here, yeah, Vikas. Yes, sir. Vikas Mishra. Mm. So, I belong to Uttar Pradesh, Ajamgarh. It is a place uh, just far from uh, Varansi, around 100 kilometers. So I uh, did my uh, class 12 from UP board and after that uh, my father just wanted to see me as a doctor. So it was his dream and I always want to fulfill his dream. So I took, I took around 3 years of drop for preparation, preparation of need and uh, unfortunately or fortunately... 3 years? Yes sir, 3 years. So fortunately or unfortunately I was unable to crack that exam. I was in depression, I got a lot of weight, Around my weight was around 100 kgs. So one day I just I, I was just sitting on my table and uh, I got a back pain and uh, I went to a doctor and uh, doctor told me that you have a sleptics problem that is because of your uh, body you got a lot of weight. So at that day I uh, decided that I have to transform my life. So basically I worked hard on my you know, weight and uh, I put uh, put down my weights and uh, again I gave so many exams. And I crack ICR and I got an agriculture university, the BSc agriculture, and I did BSc agriculture from Central Agriculture University in Park. So that was my biggest, you know, uh, you can say failure or achievement, uh, which I did uh, after class 12. And after completing uh, my graduation from uh, Central Agriculture University, so I am currently pursuing my MBA from FMS PHO, Varansi. Awesome. Great job, man. Super good job. So what is the turning point in your life? What is the turning point in your life? Sir, so my turning point was basically uh, those three years where I struggled a lot. Because I was living in a village and where, you know, the, we, we didn't get any uh, kind of uh, guidance from any anyone because so many people, they were not uh, literate in my village. And... Uh, which, which village are you from? Sir, uh, Azamgarh. 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 So uh, there is a place, Maharajganj. So uh, that is situated in Ajamgarh district. So, uh, so what's your family like? So my family do uh, army. No, no. Your brother, sister, what do they do? Uh, I am the uh, eldest one. Okay. Yeah. So yes. you have other children? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have a younger sister, and uh, she is currently pursuing BTEC. Awesome. Congratulations. Anybody would like to speak? Anybody like to share a story? Yeah. My native is from uh, near Gorakhpur in Uttar Pradesh, hmm. but my father had a transferable job. He was working with Sahara India Group. Hmm. So, uh, whole of my schooling was done in Haryana. It was in Kanal, Panipat and all those areas. And then I joined NIT Sincha for my B.Tech. Uh, while I was doing my B.Tech, my father lost his job. Everyone knows the condition of Sahara Group. So, and... <coughs> Since I, I was in 10th, since then all the issues started, the financial issues. So he was not getting his salary and even when he was getting it, it, it was very less. I have uh, uh, spent all my childhood in a rented one um, room flat. And so uh, when I joined in NTSC, I remember I uh, uh, submitted my fees from my NTSC scholarship. I was an NTSC scholar. And then after that, for the second year, I taught, uh, gave tuitions to uh, local students of Silcher, and I collected money for the whole semester and then submitted my fees. But in 2018, my father lost his job and we had zero source of income. And I continued uh, teaching students, and that is when I approached my college authorities with all my conditions, and uh, my director was kind enough, uh, he waived off my fees. 
and after this i got to uh, i got interested into uh, public policy area i uh, got interested in policy impact and i started uh, searching for opportunities so i got selected in niti ayog so i was one of the very few interns who got, who interned at niti ayog and from there i got um, recommended to sar headquarters so i was supposed to go to uh, kathmandu and work at sar headquarters for 6 months but i had no money so my director stepped in and he sponsored me so for next 6 months i was in kathmandu uh, working there on the government money uh, from from a college institute and from there the other good thing happened that i got uh, some in, into some program in russia so i had to spend one month in moscow and st petersburg again my director came and he sponsored all of me uh, uh, fees and everything so i have fulfilled uh, what i wanted to and money never came in between every time there was someone who could help me after i graduated i i joined a job i was initially working with delivery i was uh, in supply chain design as a senior sous chef but uh, the issue was that uh, it was covid time and we never owned any rent and the condition was so bad that uh, we could not pay even the rent of one month so there was a time that we didn't have a place to live We which subject we are in i am uh, studying at iim bangalore congratulations guys so for your sir bhavu good morning everyone so myself bhavana vm and i am from karnataka so rightly currently pursuing uh, pgdm abm in manage hyderabad so where did you grow up uh, chikmagalur sir karnataka so what's your family like uh, uh, like ma basically i am from a farming background where we have two acres of coffee land and i have an elder brother uh, he is a msc agriculture uh, graduate so how much the two acres of coffee produce in terms of uh, revenue uh, you don't know no, so my father and mother look after it so which school did you go to uh, i studied in one of the school which is like nearby uh, uh, it's called vs school like uh, I studied uh, like in my schooling all. I studied in throughout my schooling. I studied in scholarship only, sir. Even in uh, second uh, second year, like uh, first year PU and second year PU also, it went through my scholarship only. So, what is the significant strength that gets you get scholarships? Uh, maybe my merit. I guess like uh, merit. It may be. Uh, so, which subjects are you wonderful at? What should we know about you? Sir, I was interested to be a like a doctor. I even took a uh, this coaching for NEET also, but don't know. Unfortunately, I was not able to crack it. And uh, like we know that typically being like a from a middle class family, parents they don't give chance to choose our career. Like they, I wanted to be a doctor to take one year drop and uh, drop out, but they didn't allow and they just uh, allowed me to go to the course which ever I got. So I got into horticulture. After horticulture. Uh, after horticulture again the same thing happened sir i wanted to join uh, mba but uh, as the results were delayed like i gave my attempt in fourth year final year i was not able to like that results were delayed by that time i got my jrf results so i through that scholarship only i, I got again admitted to parbani university maharashtra but again uh, i got seat in marriage so i dropped off from so which mba did you get now uh, pgdm abm sir congratulations fantastic wow So, what was one really big difficulty you faced? Getting into MBA only, I guess. Great job. And we want to speak. Uh, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Pankaj. Uh, I come from uh, a small part of uh, UP, known as Madayu. I completed my graduation in engineering. Uh, I, I also come from a farming back background. Uh, I farming with this kind of farming, like agriculture. I know. But, yeah. <laughs> we used to like, we used to grow like uh, wheat and uh, bajra in our field. So my father, we are close to three acre land, and uh, we all depends on that uh, field. Uh, so, uh, so if you make bajra on on a three acre land, how much revenue can you produce, uh, and how it frequently? It comes around sold? like uh, if for wheat. It comes comes around like uh, eighty quintal. Yeah, we multiply multiply two thousand, and uh, around one lakh sixty thousand. So eighty quintal gives what kind of revenue? One lakh sixty. One lakh sixty thousand is the revenue. One season. So one season. Yeah. How many seasons? If, if, uh, we used to go three times. Like first uh, vajra, then after wheat in winter, and after that uh, um, maize, maca. So if everything goes well, then it's it uh, we can reach that revenue. But if uh, some weather condition is not. Uh, like so what are the typical problems a a farmer faces when they are. Major the, uh, the two acre of land and the family and all that. 
they know government is providing the subsidies for uh, like they are providing insurance for uh, like uh, uh, crops but uh, even farmer is not like they are not uh, as uh, they are, they have any complex process the farmer doesn't go to bank that is the main issue like uh, government is providing uh, like subsidy and providing the insurance but uh, farmer is not preferring they uh, somehow they have some thing in, back, in, in mind that there will be some uh, like uh, like they are uh, capture their land uh, maybe they uh, provide some loan and uh, bank will provide the loan and they maybe like capture the land anyhow so they don't trust bank so they don't avail that uh, so what they, they broadly operate in cash basically yeah they operate in cash only so even this 1.6 lakh into two or three depending on the crop session even in four five lakhs largely comes in cash yeah only cash really yeah so even if you go and sell in the mandi mandi basis with cash only no no if we go to the mandi uh, actually uh, it is very far from my place so we don't go to mandi they provide some private uh, like or middleman and they used to sell that Oh, uh, so we used to sell that middleman. They used to uh, they accommodated the uh, crop from multiple farmers. Then they sell to multiple. So middleman also pay in cash. Yeah, they they totally pay in cash. So your revenue of your family practically coming in cash. Yeah. But uh, hardly well because we have uh, hardly we remaining anything in our hand because majorly goes into like uh, like. Uh, uh, like uh, providing uh, for my like uh, uh, sometimes uh, because of lack of uh, fertilizer we have to pay extra to uh, get the fertilizer black and all that's all okay who else would like to contribute yeah 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 then yeah I good good morning everyone. My name is Yatin. I am from Palgar. Uh, I have done I have done my B Tech uh, in textile technology from Mumbai. And as uh, uh, Sanju mentioned, areca nut. I have done project on areca nut as well as uh, banana a uh, banana fibers and making a composite compo uh, composite sheet which can replace the plastic material, which is towards the sustainability. And also uh, mentioning uh, from my childhood, in my family there are only two members, me and my mother. My, my father, uh, when I was five years old, uh, he died because of some uh, me medical issues. So uh, I was raised in the family where my mother was a single person who was earning and she has to manage uh, the basic three needs like the food, shelter and everything and also with the me uh, medical uh, medi medicines of my father. But uh, that was not enough, we, we, uh, I realized that later. And, uh, and that was the factor that moving, uh, taking my mother out of that condition where she was uh, the sole person. In my family there is only, uh, I'm the uh, single child, no, no my siblings. And uh, my other, my father did not have any relatives. So we, used, we were the three people living. So uh, that was my drive towards that I want to take my mother out of this situation. I want to give her the best life. So uh, I, I did very well in my 10th standard. And after that I went in for the diploma. Uh, in textile manufacturing in uh, VJT Mumbai, where I scored the, uh, my state rank was three. Uh, so I got wow. so I got uh, uh, again I got uh, a scholarship to, to get admission in uh, VJT sec direct second year, which is rare, uh, which do usually don't you get diploma after degree admission in VJT if you all Google it. And after that uh, I scored uh, I was the silver medalist my final year BTEC in textile technology, where I did the project as Sanju mentioned. Uh, and after that, uh, I uh, I worked for like two years in D-Deco Home Fabrics, which is into D-Deco business. So we'll come to that later. So when you were growing up, uh, what is the source of revenue for the family? Uh, my mother working, just only my mother. What was she working? Uh, she uh, she she is a cook for a uh, uh, a private firm. Uh, for uh, for a uh, uh, strategic apex higher. Uh, so where did you do your MBA? Where did, where did you join your MBA? Yes, sir. Uh, I uh, I'm glad that I got admission into IIM Trichy, Tiruchirappalli, Tamil Nadu. So what is your biggest strength according to you? Uh, sir, my biggest strength is uh, my communication and uh, uh, my, my, my personality where I, I can blend into uh, in any, any environment and my resistance to do everything with, uh, with confidence and uh, have courage to do everything, do any task however it is difficult. So what do you want to achieve? What, what is your wish list? Yes sir, my, my wish is to become a businessman uh, and have my own venture. And, uh, become a businessman. Yes, sir. Do you want to know what business do you want to do? Yes, sir. Uh, in textiles only. 
textiles will be business. Good, all the rest. Who would like to contribute? Yeah. Hello, hello. Um, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Sushil Swami. So I come from uh, nearby place, uh, to, uh, nearby place to Hampi, Karnataka. So, so I was a Hampi, Hampi Karnataka. Yes, sir. So, so what is your family like? What's your background? So my family background is into business. What business? So they are into paddy and uh, water plants. Paddy and water plants. Water plants. Yes. So my father was a broker in paddy business. Broker in paddy business. Yes. yes. Uh, right now my father is working as a working partner in one of the industries. So I couldn't see the face that is going through. So I raised some amount uh, under Pradhan Mantri. So who is your sorry uh, under the Pradhan Mantri Employment Generation Program? Okay. So right now I am the proprietor of the uh, manufacturing industry. So as well as I'm doing my uh, panel. So. So where uh, did you do your uh, did you get your MBA from? So I'm doing uh, as of now from IBS Hyderabad. IBS Hyderabad. Yes. Hyderabad. As a, I, I like I love to uh, like finance. So, so, I so how did you come to know about the scholarship? So because I was looking for it, sir. Because uh, <coughs> no banks are ready to give me education loan, so I can raise a fund from. Uh, like till today, within next 45 days, I can raise a fund of up to 1 crore from any government sources, but I can't get an uh, education loan because of my father's credit history. Because of the criteria? Uh, yes. So that uh, so that's how I started searching over the internet and then I found out a scholarship. Awesome. Fantastic. You want to speak something? Hello, everybody. Good morning. My name is Rishika Ma. So I basically Rishika. come... Yes. So what's your... Uh, background? Where do you uh, study? So basically I come from Indore. I did my education there and fortunately I scored uh, above 90% in 12th standard. So there is a scholarship called Mukhya Mantri Medhavi Yojana in Madhya Pradesh. So I took uh, admission in the top university there. I got uh, three years of scholarship and it was pre-planned that I, I actually decided to appear for IP man. At that time I, I had my father. So he told me, no, I don't have any uh, money to spend on you. Uh, this is a huge amount of money. So I have an endless sister. At that time, I had my father. I lost him three years ago. Uh, and I have my mother. So my elder sister was pursuing her need coaching for two years. And she didn't got uh, two MBBS. So my father told her, like, uh, uh, you have to pursue BDS. Or else, uh, you should go for BBA and MBA and choose a path like Rishika is doing. So I had a plan to appear for IP mat in 12th standard, but he denied. Then I decided to uh, appear for CAT. After he died, um, uh, he owned a business. So we were impacted uh, by that business. So we were actually uh, forced to uh, shut down that business. And uh, after that, my uh, mom cooks for two, three people around us. So that's how we manage. But uh, fortunately, I got through CAT and now I'm pursuing my MBA from I am Sirmar. Anybody else like to share? Yeah. Yeah. So what is the one really big difficulty you faced apart? This itself is full of difficulties. But uh, yeah. so, so, great job. Uh, in my, uh, when I was in 12th uh, standard, so I, I am, I'm, I'm actually a very artistic person. So I wanted to pursue makeup artistry course. I wanted to be a choreographer and everything. And my father supported with that. But unfortunately, uh, after three months, he committed to me like, hey, you can go with this course and everything. Uh, we, I lost him, so I decided to uh, uh, make myself learn in artistry. So I started my business when I was 17 years old. So I uh, started uh, uh, taking orders from people and managed my CAD preparation and graduation from there. So that's how uh, awesome. that Great goes. Job. Anybody else like to contribute? Thank you. Yeah, I, I know you've been raising a for a while now. Yeah. Uh, Good morning, everyone. What's your name? Uh, so my name is Saurav Kumar. So where did you grow up? Uh, I grew up at Ranchi, uh, in the capital city of Jharkhand. Okay, I studied there. <laughs> okay. uh, so first of all, sir, I would like to thank all of you uh, for uh, giving us this opportunity. And you truly are, sir, an inspiring personality. <laughs> uh, so then comes my story, which I would say is more of my parents' uh, story. Because uh, my 
father uh, left his home at the age of 12 uh, because he had nothing to eat in the home and uh, he started out as a street vendor and he continued that uh, for till uh, 2019 uh, so till the time when i was still in my graduation so till 2019 he was yeah. a street vendor yes sir and uh, sir i remember when we were kids like we are two siblings uh, there's a sibling of mine and uh, i'm the younger one uh, we both were told since childhood only that tumko padhna hai uh, just that, that you guys just have to get good, uh, good education, you have to be focused. So, uh, we both were very uh, focused uh, since childhood itself. Uh, my brother uh, is currently working at PwC and he is also uh, doing very well. He also has plans to do an MBA. I currently am pursuing the MBA from uh, Delhi School of Economics. Uh, it's an international business. Uh, so. Uh, what I learned from my father, and not only from my father, but also from my mother, is that it's not, uh, like, we all talk about literacy, but I think you can be educated without being literate. So both of them are not literate, but still they had, their, they had this awareness that they had to uh, give us good uh, education. So where did you get to education? Uh, sir, uh, they made sure that we study at uh, a very good private school. It was okay. DAV Kapil there. So being a uh, street vendor, how did he have the revenue for uh, putting sir, it to a good private school? Okay, sir. So, both of our fees was around, uh, uh, I guess, remember, it used to uh, increase uh, year by year, but most of his uh, earnings were into a sa uh, fees only. Like All his fees. earnings went to the fees, basically. Yes, sir. And uh, we, uh, I, I would say that it was, it has been a tough phase, uh, and uh, more than tough, uh, it, it teaches you resilience, uh, how to be resilient, and that has made me uh, work on my body. In fact, the language in which I'm speaking right now, uh, it is something which is, uh, which was not uh, possible for me to years so back. How did you, how did you learn English then? Uh, so I did every possible thing. I I used to read books. I used to write thing, uh, write blogs. I have a blogging website. Then uh, I also used to speak every single day in front of the mirror for around uh, half an hour to one hour. So that really helped me to gain confidence and uh, then uh, to prepare for MBA. That's how I can do it. So who was the person who helped you in your life? So I would say. Uh, there have been a lot of them, like my elder brother, he paid all my fees of my undergrads. Uh, I did uh, my undergrads in mathematics, uh, I'm a BSc mathematics on this. Uh, I did that because I love mathematics, I still love it. But I'm doing an MBA because I think uh, it, uh, it it's broad. At Delhi School of Economics. Yes, sir. Awesome, great job. Last one or two students who would like to convey the story. Good morning, good morning everyone, uh, so I am Himan, I belong from Jamshedpur, I completed my graduation from Amity University, Kolkata, my graduation is in psychology, and uh, uh, post that I worked with Vodafone, post that I worked with Vodafone for two years, and currently I am with IMI Bhundeshwar. So now, uh, where did you grow up? I, I grew up in Jamshedpur up to the standard 12th and for my graduation I was in college. So which school did you study in? Uh, DAD. So what are your big strengths that you feel very proud about for your future? Uh, so in every aspect of my life, like transitioning from school to college, even from 10 to 12, I have faced so many difficulties that that have made me really rigid. My previous... Give me, give me one or two significant difficulties that you faced. Uh, in standard 8, uh, before summer vacations, I won some competition in my school, uh, around 2,000 rupees for the cash price. This was just uh, two days before summer vacation. After summer vacation, I was given a letter to enroll out of the school because I was unable to pay the, pay the fees for three months. So this was the first thing. Second thing, when I went to Bangalore, like uh, after 12, first I went to Bangalore for my graduation. Uh, my dad invested a good amount of money, but after completing six months, the owners of the institute broke into a fight. So I have to again drop that. So what does your family do actually for a living? Uh, sir, previously my dad owned a very good business in Jamshedpur. And uh, in the beginning of the session, ma'am asked uh, who all were in, 
like who has already visited Bombay, so I have a very good connection with Bombay. Uh, my dad actually, in order to grow the business more, he actually shifted the entire business from Jamshedpur to Bombay. But it went so drastically bad that uh, you know entire business collapsed, and 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 the result was that he was actually a taxi driver in Bombay itself. He, he was actually a huh? So he was a taxi driver in Bombay. Taxi driver. Yeah. Okay. He actually came to do the business with good amount of money. And then he became a taxi driver. Then okay. he became a taxi driver. He, in in the initial days, he used to sleep under that bandra so bandra ka jo that is in fly flyover. Pantraka flyover ke niche, he used to sleep in the initial days, in the car only. But uh, then again, uh, yeah, every day he used to do Bombay Pune, every day. And uh, then after struggling for two years over here, then he came back to Jamshedpur. And now the current source of income is while he was earning good, he has made some property. So the rental which we get is the current source of income. Phenomenal. Anybody else? Last, last person speaking. Okay, I can see your hand going up. Yeah, okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Navi Srikanuri, sir. Uh, I'm born and brought up from a town near Vishakhapatnam, Andhra Pradesh. And I'm not from an agriculture background, but done, done my agriculture BSc from uh, Telangana University. Uh, so I actually started uh, from a Catholic school, which have put me into discipline and uh, inculcated so much of kindness and uh, uh, interest towards helping people. Um, but I was in a situation where I need help. So initially in my schooling... Uh, so by the way, I'm not going to give any speech, huh, guys. If you want to hear, if all of you are sitting there can come here. That will be the end of the interaction. Okay, why don't you come here? It's fine. Hmm. I, I know Rachna, it's not planned for us. It's speech. Yay, okay, speech. And then? So at that time, when I wanted to help people, that, uh, that time I was in the need of help. So uh, as I was from a Catholic uh, school, uh, two people came from Russia to visit our school. Uh, so then they saw uh, they saw me and they asked me, uh, like they wanted to take me uh, to Russia. I, I mean, they wanted to adopt me <coughs> and my father denied it. Uh, but uh, they, ha they told me that they'll uh, uh, pay my uh, whole fees until my school finishes. So I had gone through my schooling with their help, and in the intermediate, I was uh, uh, as I was a topper in the school, I was uh, uh, studied free in my intermediate, and also uh, I got a good rank in the uh, Telangana uh, NSIT, so I got into a state uh, top university. And uh, my father, actually, sir, uh, what inspires me is my father's hard work. Uh, he has not studied much, uh, like he have completed his 10th uh, and then stopped and then done What his is his profession? Uh, he is a cashier, sir. Uh, Cash, where does he work as a cashier? Suzuki showroom, sir. At a? Uh, Vishakhapatnam. What showroom? Suzuki. Suzuki Maruti showroom, Suzuki. cashier. Yeah, sir. Uh, he is a cashier. Uh, uh, like, uh, and what's your family like? Uh, my brother, uh, nuclear brother, family, sir, mother, father, and I have a younger brother. He's doing uh, his uh, B.Tech second year now. And my father, uh, namesake, he's a cashier, sir. But he has a knowledge of, uh, like, the CA, uh, CA students would come to my father for clarifying their doubts. That much of talent he has. But he couldn't pursue his CA uh, he, mm, because of uh, some of the financial problems that he was facing. So he wanted to uh, get both of us, like me and my brother, get uh, good education. So he always inspired us with his words and uh, all the people, like uh, the trustworthiness that he had uh, occupied in, in the hearts of people have uh, given, like all the people used to say, your father is of this kind and you have to make him proud. Uh, so that have given me more and more uh, interest towards uh, winning my life. So what are your fears about life? What are your concerns? Concerns is, sir, how much we earn also family is the first priority, sir. So I just uh, want a good family in the future. Obviously, we'll get married. <laughs> Every girl's life will get married. And I want a good family, sir. I, I just need a good family. I just need peace in my life. Instead of having, uh, like, Becoming more and more rich is not the important thing. I just need a good family, good life, peaceful life. Would you like to share a story? Yes. Hello. Good morning, everyone. What's your name? Uh, sir, my name is Sunidhi. Sunidhi? Yeah. Where are you from? Uh, I'm from Varanasi, sir. 
Oh, I was there last uh, month ago, actually, by the way. It's, yeah. Wow, it's, it's so it's beautiful. Amazing. So, what's your own uh, background? What did you do after? Yeah, so uh, I, where, where did you do for your 12th standard? What did you do for graduation? So, I'm born and brought up actually in uh, Bukaro Steel City uh, in Jharkhand. And uh, I did my schooling from there itself. Then I secured a uh, uh, state rank and got into British Agriculture University. So, it's in Jharkhand. Uh, it's a government college and I completed my whole education. Like so what's your biggest strength you feel that will keep you ahead in life? I think resilience and perseverance because... So what do you mean by that? Give me an example. Because if I tell you my story, uh, like everyone's dad is the, is the heroes. But a hero's Not necessarily also, everyone's dad's mom, so who is a hero? Yeah, but majority. majority. <laughs> yeah. Okay, go on. So, but heroes also fall yeah. sick, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> heroes also fall sick. So uh, uh, before I was born, so my father was diagnosed with brain tumor and he had multiple hemorrhages in this course of time and he was paralyzed also. So uh, the doctor suggested he couldn't work. So for his entire life he was supported by my uncles and we were actually also supported by, uh, by my uncles. So that's how my education went and my graduation was for like 25k, the entire graduation. My uncles paid for it and then I secured third position in the university. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And after I uh, I just completed my degree and uh, I got 98 percent talent C math and then I got into uh, Go Institute of Management. So now you got to Go Institute of Management. Yeah. So what are your concerns in life? What are your if you were to think? I have seen many hardships in life already. So I think the uh, biggest concern is getting the family together and live a peaceful life without getting anyone in bad health condition. Uh, so that is that is one aspect of seeing a great life, like healthy life. Yeah. So what work do you want to do? So uh, I want to actually try all the fields I am. I like I am loving the course I am doing: marketing, operations, finance. I'm loving everything. I want to try everything and then maybe choose one field and then pursue it. I'll I'll try for the next four years. I'll try every field and then pursue one of the field which I love for the entire career. Fantastic. Anybody else? Last, last. Okay, before we come to you, someone more actually. So, I have done BTEC from Mechanical Engineering from Bijodia, Mumbai. Where are you from? I am from Akula, Maharashtra. There is a small village known as Kutari. Kutari? Yeah. So, it is in Akula district. And how many people are there in that village? Uh, probably around 1,000. A small village of 1,000 people. So, like, I was the first student who was admitted into English medium school. Wow. I went on to pursue uh, B.Tech from uh, Vijodia Mumbai, which is one of the top colleges in Maharashtra. After that, I am doing uh, MBA from IIM Trichy. So, I am fortunate that I got uh, this many opportunities in my life. Awesome. So, what's your big strength? So, I truly believe in myself. I think I know uh, think about the future, what will happen, and I am uh, confident on what I can. Basically, my uh, life revolves around two things. One is till the full stop doesn't come. The same thing is important for me. So I could hear you speak properly. Yeah, and the second one is sorry. First one I didn't understand. Till the full stop doesn't come. Till the full stop doesn't full stop, stop doesn't come. The sentence is not complete. Sentence is not complete. Okay, good, nice one. The second one is uh, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. So what doesn't you kill you makes you stronger. Okay, very good. Big hand, guys. Wow. So, what to tell us one big difficulty you faced which you overcome? Yeah. So, I was doing BTEC from uh, Visual DI, and my father is a farmer. He has to support my younger brother who was actually pursuing uh, well standard from. Uh, so, he wanted to get into some good college. And fortunately, he got into NIT Surakta. But for that, uh, you have to give him some good amount of tuition fees. So he has to support uh, him as well as me. So that was the time I was uh, facing a lot of financial crunch. Given the circumstances in the farming uh, that people face. So I have to Awesome. Start. Great job, guys. All of you. You want to go last question or share a story? Yeah. Okay. She's the last uh, speaker of the day. Okay, folks. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Good morning everyone, good morning sir. So where are you from, what's your background? I'm Srishti Srivastav and I'm from Lucknow and um, I did my bachelor's in geography and English literature from University of Lucknow and then after that I gave CAD and currently I'm pursuing my management studies from uh, IIM Sirmaur. IIM? IIM Sirmaur. Awesome. Congratulations folks. Fantastic.
So tell us uh, about uh, your growing up, your difficult, uh, any difficult phase you faced, how you overcame it. Okay. So uh, it was uh, during, uh, it was when I completed my class 12th. So after that, uh, like uh, I was uh, quite confused, like what I have, like which, which course I should pursue after that. So uh, I had a keen interest in uh, like uh, becoming an IAS officer. So I prepared for after just after class 12th, I started preparing for UPSC along with my graduation. And uh, I, I, but. Uh, after, uh, but uh, slowly and gradually, when I when I was exposed to the uh, exposed to the college culture, the uh, clubs and committees, and then uh, I, uh, I like the interest uh, grew into uh, like working in the corporate first, and also like uh, it was the uh, graduation that I was pursuing was uh, geography and English literature. So I was like, uh, it is quite coming. It is all about like theoretical. I should get some practical knowledge. I should uh, like. Uh, I was also keenly interested in public speaking. So I thought. I just thought of uh, doing uh, uh, entering into corporate. So that's why I gave uh, CAT. And uh, after that, when I came to IIM, I really struggled a lot in uh, in, the, in the institute because uh, having. Uh, uh, arts background and finding people of different backgrounds there. It was really uh, a tough competition in the class. Like each and every clubs and committees that I faced, I the interviews. The, there are like uh, uh, four to six to five to six rounds there. Uh, so there I faced. Uh, I was like uh, in the starting uh, few months. I was like depressed. Because I thought, like, uh, how will I survive here? Like, how uh, this is such a huge competition? How I'm going to get a placement and everything? So I just thought of like, let me create my own USB. So I uh, thought of like uh, starting a YouTube channel there. So uh, currently I have a YouTube channel where I uh, cover the cult cultural and the social aspect of finance and all. And also I started uh, a podcast series. Uh, of the students of the institute and uh, so this is how I overcame I uh, uh, and yes I'm happy there now I'm glad so, uh, so thanks so much for this nothing nothing compared to what all of you have gone through So, if you, all of you, like your story was amazing, your story is amazing, your story is amazing. So, I'm really meaning it, guys, because this, we are professionals. We have gone through a, for 10, 15, 20 years of work. We have dealt with multiple situations. We have learned from them. So, we, when IDFC started, we, we, we went through it. And IDFC is becoming very, very good bank now. Very good bank, meaning like fantastic, everything is good. But, um, what you guys have achieved is like amazing. Sir, everybody has a role model here. So I want to know who is your role model. See, we learn from many people in life. But you don't need role models. You, you build your own path. So I'd say that to you. Even to you, I'd say that. Don't have one model. You don't model. Think of any historical figure, right? Think of any historical figure. I can even historical figure, even mythological figure. So don't be role models because role models come with their like. What is it? So therefore, see the positives of many people. Observe that, and in other words, what I'm going to say, you could have multiple models whom you could pick from, learn from them, and uh, absorb what are the positive traits in people, and keep going. Thank you, sir. Hello, sir. Yeah, so uh, this is an amazing initiative for helping students who are in need. So this is actually your brainchild. So how you came up with this, how this idea was curated? No, I normally try not to say words like my brainchild, his brainchild, her brainchild. Because see, whatever we do in life, 
everybody is doing it some way or the other. But uh, how uh, this came about was that uh, at least uh, like your generation, when uh, you know, uh, when I was in college, for example, I I I went to BIT. I used to find that people are there who are capable of getting into a good college just on merits. So, like all of you are there on merits, but are financially weaker, right? That's a tragic combination to have. You are bright, you are capable, you are money. So we felt that we should support such words. For example, in our selection process, I personally don't believe in caste, I don't believe in creed, I don't believe in religion, I don't believe that any preference should be given for any of these factors. Okay, I believe that because people are what they are uh, and, and so on. So in this selection process, I tell Rachna all the time and uh, that uh, that the only benchmark we will go by is uh, people who are economically uh, weak. So this selection process is that we don't uh, uh, we don't pick any other criteria. We say you are on merits on your own. We pick the people who are who have had more social uh, weaknesses, like uh, living conditions are weaker or financially weaker. So that's what we do. Thank you so much, sir. So, for example, when you know, this, uh, I, when in the college I was studying, uh, there used to be a. We were all seated in the mess, for example, mess is the canteen. And uh, then all of us used to go for our lunch, etc. So there used to be one person who used to come with that, uh, you know, that uh, there used to be a, you know, four things. One sub, a steel, yeah, the steel plate, which has so containers. So four containers, one sabji, one dal, one something, something, and they used to come like that. So that used to come, and everybody would serve themselves from that. And uh, but uh, people who could afford a paneer, right? Because paneer is more expensive. So paneer would come separately and serve, and while like, all of us are sitting there and eating, one guy from behind would keep on noting who's taking paneer, okay? <laughs> because paneer was paid, was paid for, okay? So similarly on Fridays, on sweet used to come. So obviously it was on paid basis, it was not generally available for free. So people would take a sweet, they would take and somebody would take note. So in the end of the month, along with their monthly bill, they used to pay their, they used to have so much paneer, so much. And the, the kids used to serve which people butrus. So the butru used to come and they used to serve that. And so I would never take that sweet in paneer. Okay. I don't know what it cost at two rupees or three rupees, whatever. So I would not take paneer because the bill that does come. Right? So when uh, uh, then I used to think to myself that finally all of us are well to do now and all that. So I said, yeah, take care. Maybe next generation doesn't have to go through so much pain. That's why we try to support these things. So, sir, I have a question. Uh, sir, everyone over here right now is basically biggest, uh, you know, we are looking forward for a good placement, everybody over here, right? So, but everybody faces the issue of college not uh, coming, good companies not coming, branch not coming, faculties not coming, CGP not coming. So, what's, what's your guidance on this? I mean, how what should be our mindset to sail through these days? See, the first, the next two years for you are very, very important. Okay. One hand, when you see India, India growth, one amazing period is coming for India. Amazing meaning as a, as a phase in India has not come before. The next 20, 10 years or so, 20 years, which all of you are going to be in a professional life, it is going to be, uh, in economy will grow, the markets will grow, jobs will grow, uh, etc. And all of you will good, good, get good jobs also. But with regard to skills, if you are not skilled, jobs are you will be irrelevant. So my quick comment is that be skilled, because just what they teach you in academics is not going to be enough. So take additional courses, take additional uh, uh, programs, uh, take the new skills that will change. For example, if you find that artificial intelligence is becoming a big deal, if you bring GI is becoming a big deal, if you bring, uh, you know, Abhik is here, then he can probably talk to you about the many kind of skills that are coming up on the technology front. Uh, you know, you have to make an effort for the skills. So that is on the technology front. Now, there are, the other good thing is that a lot of new kinds of jobs are coming up. As I see India, new kinds of, that did not exist before because the economy has changed. As people are becoming more and more, uh, you know, as the Indian economy is growing, 
you kinds of jobs are coming in, right? Jobs, skills, that's the most important thing. So you said that new kinds of jobs are coming, but there's a very good uh, statement floating around colleges ki, uh, with coming up of automation, the jobs are actually decreasing. So. Yeah, this is a, a concern all of you will have all your life, right? So when, when, uh, when automation came and things happened in mills, imagine how the workers of that time would have felt. Imagine how workers of that time would have, been, would have felt. Okay, so and that has happened all in the history of mankind and horse carriages, cars, cars, that mills, etc. So, but if you are skilled for the new world, you'll be fine. If you're skilled for the no, new, if you're not skilled for the new world, it doesn't matter what MBA you do, you will be irrelevant. I'm warning you. If you're not skilled, it doesn't matter what MBA you do, you'll be irrelevant. So, and, and that skill will evolve for the moment. I mean, today what is skill? You know. But you have to watch out for this very, I think it's a very important question. What's the next question? So I have actually two different questions. First is on the similar lines. So like uh, all of us will uh, agree that uh, when we go for our uh, MBA interview, uh, the question asks why MBA and most of us say that we want to become leaders in future for that I need an MBA. So uh, what do you think like uh, in the coming future, the kind of market scenario we have right now in the latest uh, placement uh, seasons, we have seen a lot of difficulties. What do you think the next future is for MBAs? Like is it going to be relevant? See management are always irrelevant, no? Whether you're managing a technology firm or managing an institution or a manufacturing firm, a services, a bank, management is a horizontal, it applies everywhere. But the skills that are required will, will change, we discussed in the previous question. So in, in um, um, I, I, see for example, the, uh, with the growing India, like right now we all know India's GDP is about $3 trillion, $3.5 trillion. We all know it will become seven trillion dollars by 2030. It will probably become fourteen trillion dollars you know, by in the next eight, ten years after that. So India is uh, with that kind of economy growing. There will be lots of jobs. So management will forever be relevant. Other question is that uh, like IDFC is doing first impact, and we have heard stories about your personal philanthropy activities. Uh, but a lot of organizations uh, take the CSR uh, as a forceful uh, thing from the uh, government and other things. What do you think is the future of uh, corporate philanthropy and what should... Uh, First of all, no, no. For me at least don't use the word philanthropy and all. If you see any any description of, my, of me anywhere, that, that word doesn't appear along with me. Okay, I, I don't think of myself like that. I don't want those tags, nothing like that. But what I think is paying it forward See, we can never thank, like, you know, all of you also, you can never thank people who have helped you enough because they've already probably expired or they are, uh, they, they, you know, they are probably okay in their lives anyway or I don't know. So you can only pay somebody forward. So I believe that, you know, I don't know if any of you have seen the movie called Pay It Forward. So you can only pay forward. So the other day someone reached out to me and, you know, asked me for, you know, uh, uh, some for 25 lakh rupees for uh, getting into a, uh, you know, foreign uh, college. And he said, I'm short of money. I said, okay, Mr. Lele, you don't want to go back, but you can help someone else. Okay, so uh, I hope he does. But I'm just saying that this is my theory, that pay it forward. So, so all of you, like I you told your stories, benefited by somebody, do you really believe you can pay back the people who helped you? Maybe it may not be, but 90% you can't because that time has passed. Right? So about uh, corporate, see this uh, CSR, etc. I personally not, uh, uh, it's too, CSR is a term, is take a big piece of an obligation, but I feel that uh, there's no joy in it if you do something, it's an obligation. Joy in anything is if you do it out of you wanting to do it. Right? So for example, if you were to study, would you feel very thrilled if, uh, you know, you have to study vis a vis study or vis a vis if you enjoy what you study. There will be a difference between the two, right? So, uh, on the CSR front, at least we are trying to, at least Rachna and the team here uh, that we can see here, they are all very, very committed to this work from the from their really wanting to do something. And lastly, we think of our business itself. If our business itself contributes to a, to a social activity, that's the best thing then. CSR is only here, additional. 
Yeah. Good morning, sir. My name is Manas Rusty. So my question is: In your journey, you also face lots of problems like procrastination, demotivation, overthinking. Then how you overcome from it in your journey? See, it's a good question. Um, uh, the uh, I am not a very uh, a talented person actually, uh, and. Uh, um, uh, so I can't. You can't see that I'm a very highly capable person who got here. Thoda bhot hota hai. Sometimes yeah, I'm of course very hardworking. I'm very committed. I'm very to be straight with people, etc. But uh, uh, and that coupled with some opportunities in life that come, that together I got what I got. Uh, uh, so yeah, uh, like I said, uh, I think uh, while. Uh, you know, in a, in a growing economy, if we put our extra effort, then we get somewhere. Effort ke baad nobody gets anywhere. See, for example, there was a, uh, when, when I was in, uh, uh, I think when I was in, uh, uh, when I finished my, I think it was, when I was in a very remote location, a place called Pathan Court. So, uh, once, uh, you know, the newspaper itself used to come two days late. Okay. So they used to have a new paper called the Tribune, but it used to come two days late. First cup, first cup paper, and third, you know, third cup right? right? And um, I didn't even know most of the colleges that existed in the country at that point of time. Um, um, but uh, academically, I would say I would have been among the top, uh, maybe four, five, uh, you know, top, top ten percent for sure, maybe top five percent. Uh, so I, I guess I put an effort. I think I'm more an effort person, no, I'm not a talent person. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. I'm Sagar, pursuing HR from XISS Raji. As we are talking about generation, Gen Z, the millennium, what we are, uh, I want to ask sir, uh, how we overcome from this rat race team. Like we are as uh, academically, and luckily I got uh, placed in SIP uh, in Hindalgo and got a project on employing it. So I want your suggestion. See, the, I don't know why you use the word rat race. The word, I, I, yeah, the word is forever. Yeah, the word is forever a race here. You can't run this race. You have to be in this, you have to be in your side. Sir, right now I got in CAT 2023, I got 98. Though I am pursuing it, sir, completed my first year. But I'm not taking any colleges, uh, even though if I will Mike, Mike. If, even if I will get some IM or something, I will not take. No, no, I, I, not I, in the right no, no, I, I don't agree. You can come closer. What I'm saying is that the the my comment is that we are all in a corp, in a corporate world where we are here to achieve something, okay? even the work on the job and the career, whatever. So this is not over Right? Because at the end of the day, imagine if you are if you are in the jungle, okay? You think that lion can rest? They can't rest. Can the deer rest? They can't rest. Everybody has to be running all the time. There's no solution. Right? So, वो अपना वो जो animal world में करते हैं हम लोग life corporate world में करते हैं वही उसमें कोई solution नहीं. But the thing is that if we enjoy what we do, then you enjoy the race. Race से नहीं भाग सकते. You better run a race that you enjoy. Uh, employees are getting happy by this, right? They are just for a slight disturbance or something. They are uh, okay for changing their company. Oh, they are Because if you, see, you know, few bucks don't make your life. Yeah. There are many people that I know for, they are I call it, you are earning 18 lakhs, something you got lakhs you left. See, if it's the job is good and you are also getting better compensation, so great. But job quality comes first. If you enjoy the job, then you are you're happy to be part of the race. I don't know how many of you people run marathons here. I said, is running 40 kilometers easy. But people do it because there's a joy in it. It's a joy, you will do it great, happily. If there's no joy, you will not work, nobody can make you work. Just one to one statement, sir. Brand is a story, and uh, design is a storytelling, and sir, thanking IDFC First Bank for writing a clip art in my canvas. Sir. And especially thanks. With him for humbly replying every day. Uh, yeah. yeah, this side. Uh, hello, sir. 
Uh, so this my question is basically related to business side. So uh, uh, mostly due to my personal trends. So uh, I'm looking forward to a uh, career in strategy mode. So I was reading where you mentioned about the IDFC strategy where you grow more of deposit rather than loans. Uh, how like I want to know how this fit into the current market uh, strategy wherein uh, firms are going more into financial leverage and then even our Gen Z and uh, uh, millennials are more into a aspirational spending. So how do you think your strategy fit into uh, the current Sorry, market? Uh, bank, don't worry about bank. Bank will do well. Don't worry too much about bank strategy. Now, you have MBA entry. Now, you have to study. Okay. The thing is that the only thing I'd say is that the how the bank is built. Right. All of you finish your MBA. If you get an opportunity to come and join us, because bank is built on very fundamental philosophy that we want to do on a very very clean bank, clean from a customer point of view. Because we don't want to charge the customers some, you know, uh, hidden fees. We even the legal agreements we write, we try to write it in a very neat way. Customers understand it. Um, we tell all our product managers and everybody to design products that our own employees, our own uh, family members can consume. This is a benchmark. Okay, we call it the near dear test. The product banana. So if you put hidden fees, can you sell it to your brother, can you sell it to your sister, can you sell it to your mother, father, you won't do it. You'll say, you tell the family, so we tell people, give us product, make it for your family members. Okay, then automatically you'll make a good product. So bank is making that, and usse dhere dhere brand bantha. Someone has talked about brand earlier. Brand is one thing about how we make brand, brand, and advertising, etc. Usse kuch nahi bantha. What comes really is the experience, and experience ke piche what we put, ingredients we put in the product. In, in the, in the, in the. So that's how we think of brand. But, uh, don't worry about the other bank strategy and all which was. It was partly because I was more into business strategy as I was looking to career, okay. that's why. I'm telling you business strategy, you know, when we talk about business strategy, you know, business strategy is uh, come there and uh, Boja and everybody come here. So the, uh, the uh, business strategy meaning that see, bank is a very early stage bank, was early stage bank. Now we are not that much early stage. stage. But we are uh, in the early stage, main thing as, as leaders, we have to be careful about culture. Look, money will be made Profit can be made later also. But culture, once established, it can't be very difficult to change it. So my main philosophy is that build good culture at this stage. We are still four, five years, eight years old bank. So, um, and then a profit can be made later. So if I have time, can I ask yeah, yeah, a yeah. follow-up question, Justin? So how do you make a trade-off between like culture and then your growth and uh, and what is your key learning? Like how you make up your how what is your my thought when you make the trade-off? So when even if when we are into a situation where we have to make uh, this kind of tough uh, tough decision, so what should be in back of our mind that we should uh, keep in? See the thing is that it looks like a trade-off. But in the long run, it's not a trade-off. It's a fundamental point to make. Today, you think, okay, you um, you do certain things that is reducing the revenue of the bank. But in the long run, it is good for the bank. Okay. <coughs> so today, it's a trade-off, obviously, because the revenue goes down. <coughs> for example, we when we introduced uh, uh, some features. Uh, uh, sorry, guys. Yeah. Uh, so, so the short part without getting, getting an example, basically we, it's a, in the short run it's off, long run it's not. In the long run it gets aligned. You're not getting it. I mean, what is something that uh, that you keep in your mind that, keep so you mind. have to not, uh, so I'm, what I'm looking forward to is something very firm which I should remember even like whatever the situation may be, this is the thing that I sh will stick See, to you me. Should, you should think long. Because I'll give you one small example of a short-term trade-off in your life. Because I, if I give you examples of my life, of this strategy, I'm running the head of the bank, of course, you may not relate to it. So let me give you an example at your end. Now, supposing you finished your MBA and then you're taking the first few jobs. Okay. Now, there is one institution that is probably uh, uh, paying you a lot more, but is in an area of interest 
that is not exactly yours or you feel they are not exactly very clean or very ethical. Suppose you, get a, you, work, you work in a casino or suppose you work, get to work in a company that is making maybe a product which is not uh, great for society. Maybe, suppose making vape, vapes. The kids are doing this stupid thing these days. So, uh, you know, the big thing, the uh, smoke, they do this stupid thing. So, uh, so suppose you get to work in that place, and and then your job is to, you know, do more and more production. Your job is, uh, now, suppose your job is that, uh, now your boss tells you, we have to hook children young. Okay, then, now your job is to go nearby colleges and set up some shops. Okay, now your Wobi product, Okay, product hai, marketing hai, the market. But you look at what shit am I doing? I'm rubbish me kar raho, ja ke, ko kar raho, right? Now, in, now on the other hand, if you if you find something else which you do, which is uh, you know, which is uh, uh, in a role which you feel ki, I'm really enjoying this role for the complexity, enjoy. Plus, it's a, it is a it is a role that is for adding some very significant value of society. Which will you choose? Society. So, choice yeah. man, yeah. so that's what I'm going to tell you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, sir, good afternoon. I'm Shazib, uh, currently doing MBA from IM3G. So, I just wanted to know that uh, given the amount of experience. Sir, one for you, one question I have to ask. One question asked by that gentleman here saying that, look, what should we be doing because we are young? I'd say here, yeah, a lot of people who are generally all wasting time. Okay. Oh, the, the, apart from. Everybody has to have some entertainment, some play. Oh, you start going and playing football on a ground, they will be sitting and doing a stupid thing like this. They will be playing video games like this. I don't care on kids after they're playing football. Oh, football like here. Very easy. It is uh, your only. So they're, uh, or, or, or they're flicking on Instagram 24 hours like this. Right? Someone has been creating billions of dollars sitting in the US, or they consume it and they make it and they make it. Right? So I find that sort of time, ko, if, you use, if you use your, uh, if you, it's not that you can't do stupid things, if we just a little bit of stupid things. But uh, if you have somewhat of a discipline to your usage of time, uh, time is a very precious commodity. And the other generation is not going to So next. Uh. Sir, I just wanted to know, like, uh, we are to step into the corporate journey in one and a half years. So anything you want to tell, uh, based on the experience you have, you felt that you were one beforehand. Uh, before joining, you know, the corporate world. So, anything you want to suggest or tell us? See, the um, thing is that when we first few years, five, six years of our working life, right, um, we uh, really have to spend a lot of time learning some skills. If you get into the role and start working day in and day out. See, you think of somebody, you know, I, I started learning <coughs> uh, tennis. So if you go to tennis and start hitting the ball like this, like this, you do something, you'll achieve something. But look at the people who learn with the right technique and the right follow through. How, so it's not about how much effort we put, how much technique we put behind it, right? Now, uh, I play cricket uh, and, and I realized that the more I play a technique, you have to just put a little effort, but the ball goes far. If you don't put technique and put as much effort as you want, but you know, it doesn't go get the get the stuff. So basically, I'd say that in the first few years, uh, actually forever, uh, I guess never ends. But uh, focusing on uh, uh, technique and uh, uh, skills uh, makes you much more effective rather than just doing a lot of hard work. Hard work. So you are hard work. So laborer bhi karte hain, mason bhi karte hain, carpenter bhi karta hai. Jo dukaan mein baithte hain, 24 hours to selling some potato chips, bhi karte hain. But they never make a big revenue. Why? Because they're doing low-end jobs. Or they're doing low-end jobs. It doesn't give you. It doesn't give the lift that you want in life. So skills is very important. Uh, I want to give you a special thanks from a person who is a recipient of your scholarship, but not directly. Uh, she's a girl named Preeti uh, from my school. She's uh, almost been expelled from the school because she was not paying the fees. Uh, due to some uh, issues like uh, her father has passed away uh, very recently, like uh, a few days ago. And she asked me to thank you specially uh, because uh, the scholarship that you have provided us. Uh, and the very next day I got a call from my school principal because uh, I was holding the foundation of uh, uh, like uh, we were helping uh, five to six students uh, every year to study in our school. 
uh, with the help of uh, funds we are raising from the past batches. Uh, but this year we could raise only for three people. Uh, so the amount that you gave me, uh, I had to uh, put some of the amount to help her. So she asked me to convey a special thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, tell her even if she wants personal contribution from me, I can give. Okay, take. So, um, so that's great. Hello, uh, my name is Yatin. Uh, sir, IDFC has uh, uh, done with, with the credit card where we can link credit card with the UPI. And at the back end, it's the credit card paying the bill, but we can use the UPI. So, sir, uh, uh, I think it's a new, uh, it's a brilliant idea. So, so, can you please tell us about that? If you use the, uh, we're not the only one. I think many people are doing it. The uh, uh, if you today use your UPI, it goes and hits the bank account. In this model, it won't hit the bank account because if you hit the bank account, bank the immediately debit over here, immediately. But if you now you have the option of going and hitting a credit card you get the 30 days free credit period. It's a good thing for the customer also. So effectively, U UPI has become a UPI to credit card rate. So that's that. Anything else for us? So are we done? So that's why your job is done. OK, I have no more speech to give. I just want to just conclude by saying, great job. It was fantastic interacting with all of you. And uh, from uh, our, our bank, you can reach uh, Rachna. She's there. And as you start uh, progressing in your life, um, yeah, I'd say that uh, big, big opportunities are coming your way. Uh, number two, big opportunities can come, but if you have, you don't have the skills, opportunities will be opportunities, you'll be here only. Okay, so you have to have the skills. Uh, number three, um, you know, my experience is that there's no substitute for bending up back and working hard at things. Uh, fourth thing is that um, we work hard and motivated things only with things we enjoy. So taking areas of work that we enjoy and work we enjoy, it just gives us more energy. And fifth is that uh, maybe sometimes our generation, unlike you, you have a lot of choices. The first job we used to pick, we start enjoying it. Okay, so it's not that I had to pick up, oh, I want banking. Right? So sometimes you don't have to think too much. You just go with the flow and you start uh, enjoying it, of course. And uh, um, uh, lastly, I would say that um, uh, uh, people skills are very important. I have seen a lot of intelligent people who don't have people skills uh, and who have IQ to both goes off the chart, but their people interaction skills are very poor. And they don't go far in life. I'm telling you the corporate world, like someone said, race and all that, it's a pretty cruel world. It's, it's, an, it's, it's a cruel world or just world, it's, it's, it's the world, or the, it's the nature. So there are people who, who get stuck here, who get stuck here, get stuck here because of lack of people skills. So, uh, so people skills. And finally, uh, whatever you can uh, do to uh, pay forward to the next generation or to your friend or whatever it is, all great. Okay, thank you guys, bye.